You're watching, old mates. Backyard Tech. All right, we're sort of going over old ground with this topic, but not to the level we have in the past. This viewer wants more of an in-depth answer as to why. As I've mentioned many times in the past, I do not in any way, shape or form enjoy live audio engineering. Borderline, I hate it. Definitely compared to being in front of a large format recording and mixing console in a recording studio with racks upon racks of equipment behind me and off to the side of me, or what have you. I don't like it. I don't enjoy live audio engineering in any way, shape or form. A few hours ago, I got an email from a viewer wanting more of an in-depth answer as to why I do not enjoy it. You see, they are actually a live audio engineer and they find it absolutely the bee's knees. I don't. As you can see in the background, it's Old Mate's Q&A and advice time here at Old Mate's Backyard Tech combined with a pro audio video. And the viewers asked Old Mate a very simple question that they want a more detailed answer to. Why do I not like live audio engineering? <sighs> Frankly, I just don't. You got questions about some IT stuff. You got questions about AV stuff. You got questions about the 80 series Land Cruiser. You're at the right spot. From Old Mate's Backyard Tech, this is Old Mate's Q&A and Advice. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. It is Old Mates Q&A and Advice time here at Old Mates Backyard Tech combined with a pro audio video to kick off whatever we've called today for AV Fridays. All Audio Music Day, I think we'll, I think is what I've called it. Um, I got this email a few hours ago from a viewer by the name of... Uh, I think you pronounce it Ricardo. R-I-C-H-A-D-O. Um, hi there, Old Mates Backyard Tech. Been viewing a number of your pro audio videos and have noted in the past you've mentioned about how you do not enjoy live audio engineering slash live performance engineering. I myself am a live engineer and absolutely enjoy it and I'm curious to know why you do not like it and do not find it very fun. I find a recording studio to be utterly boring, at least in a live environment, everything is on the fly and it's much more fun and enjoyable. Could you please give me a detailed video response as to why you do not like live audio engineering and would prefer to be stuck in the four walls of a recording studio? <sighs> okay. I figured out very early on in my audio engineering days that I did not want anything to do with live engineering. Now, I live engineered at my, through secondary school. I live engineered at primary school. Partway through uh secondary school i realized that this is not for me i want to be in a recording studio um okay more of an in-depth answer in a live environment okay if something stuffs up you can't mask it. It's out there. All right. Be it feedback. Be it, you know, a musician makes a mistake. You can't go over the top of that mistake. You can't fix it. All right. If you're, whether you're FOH or foldback, it doesn't matter. If you, during rehearsals, rung the desk out, and then during the actual performance, all of a sudden you've got feedback on a on a channel because of a misset EQ. It's gone. It's out there. You can't cover it. And if it's a bad enough stuff up, 
it'll look bad on the on the on the performance because all people will be talking about is like you know oh did you hear about halfway through the performance that you know there was this horrible feedback that lasted for a while you don't want that okay um Audio engineering is not a infallible practice. Mistakes can be made. But unfortunately, the comparison between making a mistake in a recording studio and making a mistake in a live environment is in a recording studio, you can fix it. You can't do that in a live. Um, I figured out very early on that I, my goal was to get into a recording studio, which I did. Um, and I wanted to be that type of recording engineer. Look, to, to, to say being stuck in the four walls of a recording studio is not something I find a nice way of putting it. Um, I, I mean, live engineering, the other problem you've got with live engineering too is your hearing. Okay. And aside from that, in, in a live environment, particularly, say, in a concert environment, right, you've got to remember there's two mix engineers, right? Simplistically speaking, there's two mix engineers. There's FOH and there's FB, okay? FB, if you look at a stage, FB will be either off to the right or the left of stage with, you know, anywhere from 24 to 32-odd channel live desk, and that's just for all the foldback speakers on the stage, Okay, he makes a mistake, the musicians are going to howl on him. The front of house makes a mistake, the audience will howl on him. Okay, if you're recording a live performance and there's a mistake, a glaring mistake, you can't fix that on the fly. Right, live is in real time. At least in a recording studio, if a band makes a mistake, you cut it there, you trash it. This is in, well, actually, no, go back a bit. In the old days of analog, there were a number of ways to fix that problem. You could cut it off, cut the tracks off and move the tracks down to where they've got to be redone. You could overdub them, so go over the original recording on the same track. Just make sure you've got you've cut your tape, cut and um, cut your tape, and then using um, sticky tape, a special type of sticky tape, you've put the it back together like what we used to have to do when you know you were mixing multi-track tape down to two-track. Um, you could overdub it, or you could simply put into the recording session that at this time code you switch from this track to that track or you know erase tracks whatever and you know record on two other tracks so that as you redo the overdub you trash you know say chat tracks seven and eight and tracks 14 and 15 replace tracks seven and eight in a daw environment you could simply you know find where that is slice the waveform and then just keep recording after the fact, okay? That way you can actually avoid a stuff up. I don't like live environments because, and I'm not so, I mean, I'm more prone to make a mistake in live than I am in a studio. I'm more prone to overcompensation in a live than I am in a studio, okay? I find, to be honest, I just, I have a great dislike, possibly borderline hatred of live engineering. I, I, I much prefer, as you put it, Ricardo, to be stuck in the four walls of a recording studio. Now, everyone's different. Everyone is different, okay? Um, there are plenty of engineers out there who, who, who much prefer live engineering. They like the... The pressure of it, the stress, the fact that it's got to be right on the night, it's got to be, it's got to be the same every single night. Some engineers enjoy that. I don't. Okay, I just, I just don't. Um, I, I, you know, at least in a recording studio, it takes less time to set up as well. 
like rough miking. Um, very rarely have I ever rung out a control room desk. I had to do a couple of times. Um, mainly due to it not being zeroed out after the previous session. Um, but generally speaking, look, I'm not, I just don't like it. I don't like, A, I don't like the pressure. B, one, once the track's playing, and assuming you've got the console right, the EQ right, the power amp set properly and everything, there's not really much to worry about. In a recording studio, there's, you know, it, it it's not as high pressure as live. Excuse me. It's hot muggy weather's wearing me out. It's not as high pressured in in the sense of everything's in real time. But a recording studio can offer different pressures to live. I just, you know, the sim it, simplistically put, I don't like live engineering. And as I said, I borderline hate it. And I figured that out very young. You know, I was introduced to, I was six years old when I was introduced to a, I think it was a Yamaha Pro 1986, might have been a Pro 9000 or a Pro 8000. I can't remember. I am going back some what, 36 odd years. When I'm 42 this year. Yes, I'm trying to think 36 years ago. Uh, no, it must have been a 9,000. It had to be. It was like a 16-channel Yamaha Pro 9,000 or something. Um, and then, obviously, Mackie, Soundcraft as well, um, SSL, um, and that. But then... You see, right through that, plus doing what I was doing at my secondary school, I figured out very quickly, I don't like... Oh, Toa is the other mixer I've used in the past, T-O-A or Toa. They're, I'm not, not a fan of them, particularly their mic mixers, put it that way. But anyway, I figured out very early on that live is not something I want to do and that it, it's a recording studio or nothing for old mate. If I liked live audio, I'd have... I wouldn't have what I have here at home. I wouldn't have a mixing console and a, 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 a studio-grade, professional-grade DAW. I just wouldn't have it because what's the point? All right? Whereas because I have a love of recording studios and recording studio equipment, I have a DRC. I have a industry-grade DAW along with Cubase. Right, so I have all that because, and I have a setup that's as close as I can get from a, a financial point of view, as close as I can get to a recording studio. So, Ricardo, in all honesty, I just, I, it, I, I'm one of these people. Like, for example, you're recording a piece. Of, there's the other half knocking on the door. Hang on, sorry about that. All right. Say you're recording a piece of music in a recording studio, all right? The band's playing and you're recording and you're laying it down and then all of a sudden, you know, twang. And, you know, everyone heard it. It doesn't matter. It could be that one of the instrument players, you know, way out of whack. And then, you know, just all of a sudden everything just stops dead. That's easier to fix Say that happens in a live environment, okay? Say it's a concert. It's 20 odd thousand people there. And out of nowhere, you get twang. And it just, it just reverberates around the entire stadium or outdoor area or concert hall or what have you, all right? The crowd will get the giggles, okay? The musicians will look like idiots. And there's no way to fix that. There's no way to... You've either got to go back a few bars and restart, or you've got to pick up from where you left off 
and that's going to look real ugly if you are recording it. Now, say you're doing a, a, a concert and you're going to record it live. Obviously, you'd record each night and then cobble that all together. Okay, that takes more time, so on and so forth. All right, so do I, the whole thing with live and me, I just don't enjoy it. You know, put me in a recording studio with anywhere from, say, 48 to 96 channel console and, you know, racks behind you, racks off to the side, patch bays, um, you know, uh, mag tape recorders, be it analog mag, DTRS, something like that, or, you know, a computer with Mixbus 32C on it. I I'm going to be in my element. I'm going to find that far more enjoyable and far more fun than being stuck out in the middle of nowhere in the weather, in the weather, you know, either running Foldback or FOH. Um, many people will probably disagree with that. If you're a live performance engineer, you may disagree with me. That's fine. I don't care. Heaps of people do. That is, do disagree with me. Um, you know, I, I, I just find that recording studios, you can have real fun with everything. Like, in, you can muck around with the sound. You know, you, you can create effects just using outboard gear. You know, or change or change the way something sounds. You know, you can reverse something if you want. You can't really do that in a live environment without it being pre-recorded. Right? Um... Obviously, nowadays, you know, you, you you don't really need a full band in the studio. You just need Cubase or Reason or Logic or Reaper or any of them. And you can record an entire band in MIDI and then just bring the, you know, mix it, plug the freaking laptop or what have you into a couple of channels on the mixing console, grab the vocalist, get them to sing, job done. You know, um, that's not what I like doing, but anyhow. There, there's there's that. There's also the fact too, Ricardo, that I... I don't find it fun. I mean, you've got to want to enjoy, whether you're doing live or studio, you've got to want to enjoy it, okay? And I don't enjoy it. The few times I have done some smallish concerts, I have found it boring. Not the band, but the audio. Really, really, really boring. But put me in a recording studio? Mate, old mate will be smiling from ear to ear over it, trust me. So, I know we're going over old ground with this, but I, I've been asked this question so many times both here on YouTube and other people. Why do I dislike live engineering? And it's simply, I just, I don't like it. You know, I, I, I prefer to be in front of like, you know, Harrison, SSL, Neve, um, Mackie, Soundcraft. Um, you know, 32, 48, 64, 96 channel mixing console. You know, the heavy hitters. Not necessarily a G-series out of SSL, because that's getting a bit beyond a joke. Um, or an MPC, for that matter, either, because... Wow. Harrison, what is that MPC-5 is... Good grief. That'd scare the pants off me using that. Um, you know, that, and then, you know, you've got racks of outboard equipment behind you, you've got racks up the walls, you've got a machine room where you've got, you know, tape machines and computers and hard drives and, you know, all that is what I love. You know, a live environment with speakers and keyboards and instruments, and my cables running everywhere, um, sound diffusion, you know, um, 
semi semi isolation baff, uh, partitions and that to try and give you a bit of isolation in a single room. All this stuff is just stuff I love doing. Live, on the other hand, no. I just, you know. I mean, I know people sit there and say, oh, you know, you can have fun with live audio. Well, I haven't found anything fun to have with live audio. You know, I just... Uh, yeah, I borderline hate it. Now, MV5, my good mate, he loves live audio. He loves it. He prefers live audio to a recording studio. As I've mentioned, he and I are 180 degrees apart. He's Pro Tools. I'm Mixbus 32C and Cubase. He's live. I prefer studio. He's a former DJ. CDs. I used to do turntables. So you can see we're both similar, but we're 180 degrees apart, right? So you know, that, that, that's where I, I, I prefer. And I know Pete, I, I can see it now. The comments from some people are going to be horrendous about the fact that I'm dissing live engineers. I'm not dissing live engineers. I'm just saying I don't like live engineering. That and, you know, you make a mistake as a live engineer, it's on your head. At least in a recording studio, you can cover up the mistakes of both you and or the band. You know, and I, I went to a concert oh, years ago and something went pear-shaped and everyone blamed the engineer and then turned out it was the band's fault. You know, they'd gotten too close to the foldback speaker and created their own feedback through FOH. Initially, they thought it was the sound engineer, the live engineer for FOH. Turns out it was the freaking lead singer. But instantly, the crowd looked at the FOH engineer. Now, whether it was FOH or FB, it's a mute point, basically. So that that's the best in-depth reason I can give you, Ricardo. It really is. I, I find it utterly boring. Now... The MV5 has seen me in a studio and knows that once I'm in there, it's very hard to get me out. He's also seen me in a live environment. He had trouble trying to keep me in it. Okay, so you see where I'm going with this. There we go. Hopefully that's as in-depth as I can make it, uh, Ricardo, because I really... <laughs> I don't want to say I hate it, I borderline hate it, but each to their own. There are going to be people who love both. Now, there'll be plenty of sound engineers out there who, who enjoy both live engineering and studio engineering, or live engineering and live recording, or, or sorry, live engineering and recording, live engineering and mixing, live engineering and mastering. You know, you get some recording engineers who work in both fields. That's their job. They, they you know, work part-time in a recording studio and then they're part-time out on the road you know a 50 50 split between the two give me i should actually say this give old mate a large format console recording equipment racks of outboard gear and something to record you're going to struggle to get me out of a recording studio well well after about 13 hours in a recording studio, I can go home. After four hours in a rec recording studio, you've got no hope of getting me out of there. None whatsoever. <laughs> there we go. Stick around, guess that track coming up, and also a little bit of Mixbus 32C work on the cards as well. And have a good one. <laughs>